evening and welcome to Hugh Manchester, Great Britain. So, it is my immense honor to say to all you slum dwellers, your prayers have been answered. Welcome to Paradise! <laughs> Outside, they had forgotten that these were not just homes of concrete bones or no-go zones. There was an old Jamaican woman who would cook dinner for my friend Glenn every Sunday on William Kent. Then there was Yvonne, who said she didn't know she lived in a ghetto till she read it in the news. Condemn. We were condemned before these buildings fell, before one piece of dust rose from the demolition. We were condemned before they saw the sunset lick this grey brick on a summer's night. Right? Outside... They have forgotten that these were not just homes of concrete bones or no-go zones. Oh. The history of Hume is indeed a history dominated by demolition. This is its second major clearance program in 30 years. The first, in the 1950s and 60s, saw the destruction of Victorian dwellings, which had come to epitomise slum housing. Their demolition fractured the community, leaving few of the original tenants behind. By the early 1960s, Hume had become one of the biggest urban redevelopments in Europe. Left with a vast area of empty land and faced with the need to rehouse large numbers of people quickly, the council were encouraged by government policies at the time to commission architecture that used industrialised building techniques. It does, of course, mean factory-built houses, but factory-built houses can be just as good as production line cars. And I think we're going to move to this. The only thing is to make sure that they're done by good architects and well landscaped, and that will get over any danger of monotony. Wanting to avoid the problems associated with tower blocks, Manchester, along with many other city councils, chose a new, much praised type of architecture called deck access. A series of housing blocks linked by streets in the sky, it aimed to recreate the old communities. Hume became one of the biggest deck access estates in Britain. A large number of low-rise dwellings were built with a spectacular vision, with four huge crescents at its heart. The crescents were designed by the architects Lewis Wormsley and Hugh Wilson in 1965, creating 924 new homes and costing just over £4 million to build, Significantly, they were named after famous British architects and they were modelled on the Regency terraces of Bath. At the time, they were seen as state-of-the-art social housing. By the eve of demolition in 1993, conditions were so appalling that the Crescents had become dramatically depopulated. Many of the tenants in Hume are now housed in surrounding lower blocks. The chequered history of the estate has created a unique mix of people, young, permanent residents and travellers who are determined to stay together as a community through this redevelopment. I was in Manchester when they were going up. They looked absolutely magnificent. And I think that at the time, everybody felt that they were, you know, new world, utopia stuff. Completed in 1971, the Crescents were initially hailed as an architectural success story. However, the first tenants moving into the blocks encountered problems so fundamental that it called into question the whole design. People couldn't afford uh, to run very expensive electrical heating systems and cold, damp, condensation, bronchitis, pneumonia, etc. set in. They were dangerous. Um, a kid fell off one of the balconies and died very early on. And above all, there's a rabbit warren of escape routes for uh, social misbehaviour to breed within. Um, they are the worst form of housing to police. When we first saw the state of them, it was the height of them. Yeah. My God, it was frightening. How do you remember feeling frightened? Frightened of such monstrosities. It was the electricity that none of us had realised, you know, that... Um, it was only warm air heating 
Yeah. And the, the cost of it, for what you were getting only on the um, ground floor of your masonette, and nothing in the bedrooms, was that bad? I mean, people had to cut back on food and all kinds of things. Just four years after it was completed, this new utopian vision was already a notorious failure and tenants were demanding to be rehoused. Faced with a situation where they couldn't afford demolition, in 1975 the council took the decision to move families off the Crescents and to replace them with all adult households. And so a second phase in the life of these buildings began. Factory Records started in Hume. Um, they started in the club just outside my flat here. Through the late 70s and the 80s, the music, art and subculture to emerge from Hume created its own niche in the mythology of youth culture. The Crescents experienced another vision as a new bohemia and became a magnet for young people. some fantastic murals on the sides of walls and some people have done some incredible things with paint and posters. And if you can find the architectural clothing to fit your lifestyle, it will become acceptable. And Hume, ironically, became acceptable. Although the Crescents had become acceptable to the new community, life was not easy. The isolation of the estate and the economic decline of the area also attracted problems of escalating crime. For Manchester City Council, the Crescents had come to symbolise the problems of inner city deprivation. By 1989, they set out to find the funds to demolish the Crescents. Despite a fight by tenants to keep one of the blocks, the City Council remained unmoved. In 1991, Hume, regarded as one of the worst examples of inner city deprivation, was awarded £37.5 million from the government's City Challenge Scheme towards redevelopment of the area. Finally, plans for the demolition of the Crescents and surrounding lower decks could begin. Forward planning cheats the present day. History recoils, repeats. Another utopian dream screams, eats itself away as the bullish bulldozers break the legs of these sick, derelict, docile sculptures. The echoes of crackling concrete kiss the ground, spewing streams of bent steel. And for the last few years, this has been the anarchist playground, a grey blank slate to draw the fate of their world upon. It's been our 24-7 student heaven, along with cockroaches. It's theory-ridden, a place where even dogs are in heaven. Under the crescent's moon, rest in peace, Hume, with all your storm roses. People that have lived here for a long time have gone through several experiments and been the victims of those experiments. They understand, I think, the value of what the modernists were saying about light and air and space. And I think that's been fully understood by people who've inherited the decks over the last 20 years. They see there is a communal dimension to the decks if they're properly built. And that's what they want, because urban life is basically communal. <laughs> While some visions of the future now exist, the demolition of the Crescents still causes resentment. Light. The raising of the Crescents became a symbolic event staged by the local performance group Dogs of Heaven, commissioned by Hume Regeneration. I mean, like, I moved in and the tide was flowing out, but the sun was still shining, and now it's like, you know, the sun's going down a bit. Well, it's going to rise again. I don't doubt that. 